Stress can alter the porosity and permeability, the hydrological parameters. Now I am starting the permeability issue first. We can write without giving a proof, I am saying Kf is equal to B square by 12, where Kf is the fracture permeability. What is permeability? The ease of flow within a medium. In case of geohydrology, the ease of water flow, groundwater flow through say fracture medium. B is the fracture aperture. What is the meaning of the aperture? Imagine this is a piece of rock I am observing and I can see a fracture within it. Now this fracture can be zoomed. This is basically a tiny opening. Say I am putting a hand lens and I see this line is a crack and there is an opening. Then this orthogonal distance within the opening A can be called as the aperture of the fracture. This is again a simplified case in reality this A is non-uniform. So, if we are very accurately drawing such a situation will happen. So, in that case statistically meaningful aperture is to be found out that itself is a dif uh, different exercise. Now, we come back here say B is a fracture aperture ok instead of A I am writing as B and remember just going back to this once again if the fracture shows non-uniform opening, then we say that the fracture has got an asperity. Not getting into them. Imagine we are dealing with a constant aperture and no asperity. In that case, Kf is equal to b square by 12. And in case of a number of such fractures, Kf will be equal to b cube by 12s, where the single fracture model, this is a single fracture model has been extended to the parallel fractures. That means, there is a rock body and we are getting the parallel fractures. A new term has come small s. What is the small s? This is the spacing between the two fractures and let us say it is constant. Between these two parallel fractures spacing is constant because they are parallel line and the same s is between this one and that one. So, again a simplified model we are thinking Kf equal to B cube by 12 s when s remains constant and then this is the relationship between the fracture permeability and the B value which is the fracture aperture and then s is the spacing between the fractures. Now, let us see what happens if there is a stress applied how this Kf actually varies. We have several empirical relationship. One of the empirical relationship I can write Kf is equal to K0 multiplied by log log. log. So, that means to the base 10 sigma 0 dash divided by sigma dash. It is experimentally derived empirical law. What is it? Let us try to understand different symbols. K0 is the initial permeability when a sigma 0 dash amount of effective stress was applied. Sigma 0 dash is the initial effective stress that was applied and sigma dash is the effective stress applied and for that Kf is the permeability that is produced. So, in this case uh, the change in the effective stress, how much is the change in effective stress? Sigma dash minus sigma 0 dash it can be understood geologically also not just in the laboratory in terms of uniaxial compression or extension or extension. Imagine there is a rock column of height H1 and I am dealing with permeability over here from a piece of rock. So, this is I can call it H0 and here it is K0 permeability. Now, after some time due to continuing erosion, the height has been reduced to H final and then this rocks permeability can change to K final. Now, when there was height of H0, the 
stress or pressure applied at this point in this region or on this line was H0 into rho into G. Now imagine there was some fluid present within the rock so that was also exerting a pressure. So the sigma dash the net one will be equal to H0 rho G alpha multiplied by pore pressure PP. Alpha is a biot constant and sometimes it is taken as equal to 1. So we write H0 rho G minus PP or we can write alpha PP if alpha can be obtained that means not the entire pore pressure goes against this downward pressure but a fraction of it comes in. Alpha can be equal to 1 or less than 1. Okay. So now and when the height is HF what happens? Uh, I can write sigma what was the symbol I used there I use a symbol 0. So this is the initial and only sigma will indicate HF into rho into G. So here I can write sigma dash is equal to the effective stress is HF into rho into G minus alpha PP. So now from this and that I can write the change in stress if I want to write the change in stress just want to see how it looks like it will be final minus initial so it is HF rho G minus alpha PP and then this is to be subtracted minus H0 rho G plus alpha PP. It is interesting to note that the pore pressure and the biot constant are going out of this business and it comes out as rho G multiplied by HF minus H0. If at all we consider that throughout this process of erosion and over thousands of years or even over millions of years the pore pressure has remained the same and now it looks unlikely also. Pore pressure will also change with time but that we are not bringing here. So the change in stress is equal to rho G multiplied by HF minus H0. This is what our one of the understanding and now these sigma 0 dash and sigma dash can also be introduced in this and we can see how much changes or how, what are the new things coming up. So from here I can write Kf is equal to K0 multiplied by log of sigma 0 dash that means H0 rho G minus alpha PP and then we can write HF HF rho G minus alpha PP. So here what has happened a mix this formula is giving basically a mix of the laboratory experimental empirical law this one and here is definite clear cut physical law those two have been mixed up to give this relationship. If you remember earlier in this lecture series I have also talked about the representative density rho bar not the average rho bar if the rock is having some layered nature having the constant density variation in three direction. So if you want to introduce here you this will be the simple thing that can be done the rho bar can be added up. Different other things you can think of for example for PP equal to 0 say there is no pore pressure because of no fluid present what will happen KF equal to K0 log and then this will go out and H0 by HF we can think about this is another form. Here in the diagram H0 minus HF is equal, is equal to our delta H the change in height. So 
I can write this as rho g into delta h over here. If you wish you can bring delta h also inside. For example, you can write h0 equal to delta h plus hf. So, if I do that, So here we can say Kf by A0 is equal to log 1 plus delta H by Hf. So here we considered like material was there and erosion happened and the height got reduced. So the effective pressure and other things also got changed and we have seen in the equation how things will be altering. I want to make you recollect that this was the laboratory generated empirical model where a fractured rock was considered, one set of fracture was considered and here I am doing the theoretical material where I am thinking of pores and pore pressure. So together what kind of rock we are thinking a porous rock with one set of fracture that has been mod that can be presented how the change in pressure can alter the permeability, the fracture permeability. There can be another permeability within the pores that one we are not talking here. In the way I said that the material can be eroded and height can be reduced you one can think in other way also. For example, here is a rock column this portion is a part of rock we are thinking in terms of Kf the final, the final fracture permeability imagine over there there has been sedimentation. So basically there is an increment in the height leading to an increment in the stress. Now that also can be presented by if one can keep on thinking several possibilities. For example, you can think the sediment that is being depositing here has a different pore pressure. So PP1 and PP2 has to be introduced in the formula or you can think that there is no pore pressure whatever is being deposited depending on the geological situation. Likewise from the laboratory generated empirical model or what has been published and what we are doing theoretically can also be linked and this is well appreciated in geoscience. We have seen how the permeability will alter if the body is stressed in a simple case that there is a single set of fracture and the fracture permeability was considered. Now there are no end of detailing. I will initiate a problem and show how the researchers have tackled the problems and uh, interested viewers can get into the details. Consider there are two sets of fractures which are perpendicular to each other and I have drawn them as blocks. We can see there are two sets of fractures. In fact, the third set is also shown there. X, Y, Z are the coordinate axis. We have decided B, X is the aperture, fracture aperture. Consider it is constant and there is no, and there is no asperity. By is along the axis y the aperture and assume the asperity is 0. Kz is the permeability of the fluid flow along the z direction. This is the z direction and Kz is the permeability along that direction. So here we can write Kz the permeability due to change in aperture from Box to Bx and Boy to By. Bx and By I have defined. So similarly you can define Box, Boy, Bx and By. Now if the aperture Box has undergone a change and the amount of change is delta Bx. Similarly the aperture Boy has undergone a change and the change is delta By. Then this is the equation Kz equal to K0z or Oz. What is Koz? It is the original permeability along the z direction. 1 minus delta Bx by Box minus delta by by boy here is a cube. Now if we want to link this equation or this model with the applied stress we have to find out a relationship that how an applied stress alters the bx and by or how bx is a function of x and how by is a function of not x this is stress sigma and stress. If it is uniaxial it will be easier to handle. We have seen the thermal effect on a deforming body 
and we have also seen how the stress can alter the hydrological properties such as permeability. Now I am going to talk about stress and strain together. For that some theoretical work is needed. We are going to discuss now the double dot product or the double contraction of the two tensors. This is applied on two second rank tensors and the scalar is an outcome, the scalar will come out. Two 3 into 3 matrices representing two second rank tensors will be taken and the outcome will be a scalar quantity and it has a purpose. First once, once this definition is coming, purpose is not explained but purpose will come soon. Consider second rank tensor A and these are the elements A11, A12, A13, B21, sorry A21, A22, A23, A31, A32 and A33. Similarly consider another tensor B, B11, B12, B13, B21, B22, B23, B31, B32 and B33. So, as promised we have taken two second rank tensors. This double dot product will not work between a scalar and a tensor or vice versa or between two scalars. So, we have started with the two given second rank tensors. Now, how it is defined? It is defined in this way a double dot b is equal to a i j b j i and here this is an Einstein summation. In some other book they write a double dot b as a i j b i j as well. Now what does this mean and how, how is it possible that both the definitions are there? The reason is in most of our studies once we are dealing with stress and strain we consider that the cube is not rotating and we consider the symmetric tensor representing stress and also a symmetric tensor representing strain that means sigma i j equal to sigma j i for when i not equal to j and epsilon i j is equal to epsilon j i when i not equal to j. Once that is being considered basically both the definitions give us the same result. Now let us try to understand what it means. I take a i j b i j and I am going to expand it. So a 11 b 11 a 22 b 22 a 33 b 33 basically this element multiplied with this element this element multiplied with that corresponding elements are multiplied and being added up. Now, this I wrote without considering that they are the symmetric matrix. Now if I add up a, the concept that A i j equal to A j i and B i j equal to B j i for i not equal to j that means symmetric condition is imposed on the two matrices. Then what will happen? This A 1 2 B 1 2 will be same as A 2 1 B 2 1. The reason is A 1 2 is same as A 2 1 being symmetric matrix and B12 is same as B21, B being a symmetric matrix. So these two will be added up as I can write A12, B12 and multiplied by 2. Similarly, these two terms will be the same and these two terms will be the same. So for when, there is, when we are dealing with the symmetric matrices, both of them, this one and that one, then the double dot product A double dot B is given by A11 B11 plus A22 B22 plus A33 B33 plus 2 multiplied by all the non-diagonal elements. So this is the thing. Now some properties we can watch. Say there is a second rank tensor T and I do a double dot product with I. I is the matrix of this form. So now you can see take T let us say like this A11, A12 etc and then do a double dot product with that multiply the corresponding terms what will happen this will survive, this will survive, this will survive rest of the terms are all multiplied by zeros. So therefore what comes out is the trace of the matrix that is what I write T then double dot I is equal to trace of T. Similarly it can be shown as has been written here like a double dot b is equal to b double dot a that is what is written t double dot s is equal to s double dot t and we can also prove t double dot s u is equal to s transpose t double dot u this also can be proved. Now 
Interesting thing, the double contraction of a symmetric tensor Sij equal to Sji. Consider we are taking a symmetric tensor. How it will look like? A11, A12, A13, A12, A22, A23, A13, A14, A13, A13, what to write here? 3132, so it will become 23, A33 of this nature Sij equal to Sji. It's a symmetric matrix and a skew symmetric tensor, another tensor Tij, this time it is minus. So you can write here a skew symmetric tensor. I have written one for you, second one you write. Then you do a double dot product S double dot T, you will get 0. You can do it in this way. In fact, it must be done so that you develop a practice. Now that we have seen the double dot product, we want to see some of its interesting properties. Consider there is a stress tensor given by 3 into 3 matrix. I am taking another tensor which can be considered it as stress 1 1 1 1 1 1 and 1 1 1. And I can break or decompose this A tensor into A1 plus A2. A1 will be given where all the diagonals are there and rest are 0 and the second one is here the one unit are there and the diagonals are all 0. So as I told earlier this will be called as an isotrope. So now if I do a double dot product between sigma and a1 that means this one it will be basically this multiplied by 1 plus this multiplied by 1 plus this multiplied by 1. So this becomes basically trace and it comes out to be also I can write as sigma and double dot the I3 the identity matrix 3 into 3 1. Similarly we can write sigma double dot product A2 that means this one and this one are taken into consideration. Then the sum will be sum of all the shear stresses and now if I do the sigma and the double dot product with this A it will be sigma then double dot product A can be written as A1 plus A2 and clearly from these two we can write this is same as sigma double dot A1 plus sigma double dot A2. And in the way this is written for stress we can also write same thing for strain epsilon double dot A1 equal to trace of this term which can be written as epsilon double dot I3 and this can be written as epsilon double dot A2 equal to sum epsilon Ij for I0 equal to J. And then from there we can write epsilon double dot A equal to epsilon double dot A1 plus A2 is equal to epsilon double dot A1 plus epsilon double dot A2. This is obvious. If it is true for stress, the same thing will happen for strain, but I am just explaining the obvious things. What has been done? A has been decomposed into A1 plus A2. If we decompose more, A equal to A1 plus A2 plus A3 up to An, this relationship will hold true. Or if in place of plus, we put minus, say A1 plus A2 minus A3, then similar relationship can be worked out. Now also look at the double dot product between sigma so one such matrix it will come out as sigma 1, sigma double dot and one such matrix sigma 2 will come out or sigma 2 2, sigma double dot and one such matrix this is for the sigma 1 2 term. So sigma 1 2 term will come out. I hope there will be no not much confusion with this thing. Also we can write sigma then double dot product k multiplied by i3. k can be any number then also it will turn out to be 0. And we can write the strain epsilon 3 into 3 matrix double dot product with i if it becomes 0 that will naturally mean that epsilon 1 1 plus epsilon 2 2 plus epsilon 3 3. In other word we can write epsilon i i in the Einstein summation symbol or we can write this same as epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3 whatever be the form it can be written as epsilon v and which will indicate 0. Now this 0 can indicate does it mean no, no volumetric strain? So this is a question to you, you have to find out the answer by thinking. Now further consider there is a stress tensor B 
given by b11 b12 b13 b21 b22 b23 b31 b32 and b33 suppose i decompose this b into b1 and b2 not necessarily as isotropes or not in that way in any other way this has been done now my question is will sigma double dot product b that means between these two will be same as sigma double double dot product b1 plus sigma double dot product b2 will it be always true if it is not under what condition this relationship will be true we will now see the double dot product taking forward now let's see how the double dot product can be used for some purpose we are going to define the strain energy density for the linear elastic material and it is defined as w equal to 0.5 sigma then double dot epsilon a stress can produce a strain and in that case a double product between them for the nine components stress has got strain also has got nine components their double product will give a scalar and divide by 2 is called as the strain energy density let's try to understand it's physically suppose x axis is the strain and the y axis is the stress and we have got some magnitude of stress and strain plotted in a simplified explanation say this coordinate is epsilon comma sigma now here this right angle triangle defines an area which is equal to half multiplied by stress multiplied by strain these magnitudes strain has no unit it is unitless whereas stress is like force per unit area so i can write force multiplied by length divided by area multiplied by length is equal to the volume force multiplied by length can be called as the work done denominator is volume the work done can be called as energy denominator is volume energy then multiplied by this volume is written as density divided by mass so now we see that the energy and density are coming into the picture so that is why we call it as the strain energy density and what it can indicate in this simple case that there is a single component of stress and a single component of strain then in this diagram this area is the physical meaning of the strain energy density now let's try to understand it sigma double dot epsilon sigma is a 3 into 3 matrix epsilon is also a 3 into 3 matrix so what to do multiply their corresponding terms this i have explained just now regarding the double dot product now note that this stress sigma can also be written as sigma m plus sigma dash what does it mean we have already discussed but let me make you recollect this sigma imagine this is the nine component expression of sigma sigma m is the mean stress so i write here sigma m sigma m sigma m and these are all the uh, zero elements and sigma dash sigma dash is basically the dihydrotic stress component so this is the sigma dash this is the meaning of sigma dash and this is the meaning of sigma m this sigma m once i write has to be bold this is unbold this sigma dash also is to be in bold so that means this writing should be all in bold i am trying to explain by rewriting on the board okay so basically if you add up the respective terms sigma 1 1 minus sigma m plus sigma m will come back to sigma 1 1 and what is sigma m is arithmetic mean of the three normal stresses so sigma 1 1 plus sigma 2 2 plus sigma 3 3 divided by 3 so these are the dihydrotic stress components and this can be called as the dihydrotic stress tensor now let's understand regarding this epsilon is this a strain matrix strain matrix i have already discussed but so far i never told you about that strain can also be decomposed into two components this i have not said so far i remember so this is basically epsilon m and this epsilon m in bold these are in unbold and this is the dihydrotic strain tensor i write here epsilon dash so the mean strain plus the dihydrotic strain tensor together will go back to this epsilon is easy to see epsilon 1 1 minus m plus epsilon m is equal to epsilon 1 1 and so this and this 
this and this can be used to explain this and it comes back over here. So I just make it clear epsilon m is equal to epsilon 1 1 plus epsilon 2 2 plus epsilon 3 3 trace of this matrix divided by 3 the arithmetic mean of the 3 normal strains. Now with this in mind we come back here and that is what we are writing sigma equal to sigma m plus sigma dash all in bold. So this indicates 3 into 3 matrix that indicates 3 into 3 matrix that also indicates same thing. Similarly epsilon bold equal to epsilon m bold plus epsilon dash. Now what can be done? These terms will be put over there and that is what has been done and after doing that a multiplication has been made. After doing the multiplication we find that these two terms will become 0 and that can be easily be checked. For example, the sigma m term over here if you do a double dot product with epsilon dash it is over here do a double pro double dot product between them and find a scalar you will find 0 coming out and similarly 0.5 multiplied by sigma dash the divisoric stress tensor and double dot product with the mean stress mean strain that also becomes 0. The mean strain is over here epsilon m if that is multiplied with the divisoric stress tensor in the double dot product then we find 0. So this term basically go out what comes out is 0.5 sigma m the mean stress and then double dot product with the mean strain that is being stated and then plus the divisoric stress and double product double dot product with the divisoric strain is being stated. So only this will be the remnant and rest of the things vanish. I will request you to actually run this in detail and that detail detail is given there you will find we will now move forward with this idea.